GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. Well, you know something mean, Gene. When I want to win some money, I listen to the Fantasy Football Bros podcast. What you gonna do, dude? You're gonna listen to it. You're gonna laugh. You're gonna win some money. What you gonna do when these 26-inch pythons run wild on you, brother? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Hey, everything on three. Number three. Wait, on wait. Oh, wait, on three, one, two, three. Wait. You are now listening to the Fantasy Football Bros Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Fantasy Football Bros Podcast. It's your boy. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. what Chaz, and with me, I am joined by two of my virtual right. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Jay Coleman. Jay Coleman, what's up, dog? What's going on, boys? And over here showing some awesome Christmas gifts, we got the fantasy football surgeon himself. Feel like a surgeon. Zags, what's up? What is up, boys? Hope everybody had an amazing holiday season. Now, I'm not going to call you out, but I'm pretty sure you promised to play um, the, our Fantasy Football Bros theme song on your new toy. Um, yeah. Hold on one second. <laughs> uh... <laughs> um, so, guys, if you if you guys are just listening on on the uh, on the old Spotify, what I have in my hands is a replica version of uh, Link's Ocarina from the greatest game ever made, the Ocarina of Time, and I will now be playing one note from the Fantasy Football Bros theme song because it's the only one that I know how to play to make uh, noise with this thing, and it is it is this. <laughs> pretty, pretty spot on. That's pretty spot on. If you can't tell, it's the Fantasy Football Bros uh, theme song from that. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can help you. Well, Dave told me he didn't want to do that, so of course I put him on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what a good host does. I'm okay with it. It's all for the, it's all for the content. It's all for the content, boys. And I'm sitting here. Got, sorry, guys. I'm chewing on a... a uh, a candy cane. So sorry, and I'm I'm okay now. So how was everybody's Christmas? You all get what you wanted. Yeah, it was good. Christmas was good. Yeah, I got uh, two free meals, so never can complain about that. And uh, and and a bunch of nerdy stuff that I will uh, not show anyone unless there's some <laughs> ladies out there that want to see the collection. <laughs> hey, baby, you want to see my ocarina? <laughs> I have the high score on asteroids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play you the song of time, and we're going to go back to the better days. <laughs> hey, hang on. You need a ride? Let me play a Pona song, and uh, we're going to get out. <laughs> Jay's like, oh, I, don't, I didn't play that shit. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I, I did not how, play it. So. I, Come I, on. I I love how you're ragging on me like super hard, but throwing these deep cuts out like a Pona song that only like a true nerd would know. <laughs> it's a great game. You you are right. It's a great game, and I've actually never beat that game, and I bet, but I will someday because of the fucking water temple for all you at home. The fucking water temple. <sighs> the temple Absolutely. that will will remain uh, out of our our thoughts and prayers. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's get moving on. If Adam's going to join us, I, I was on a move because I want to get moving. So um, Adam, we'll f- uh, he's not here, but we'll speak for him. Adam is in the Fantasy Football Bros Fantasy Football Championship against Saints Joe. So do you guys have any predictions on it? Let me pull it up here so everyone could see real quick. Um, you think I'd be prepared, but, you know. <laughs> Are you ever? Top, just top-notch host. 
Top notch host, uh, top notch fantasy analyst. Okay, here it is. All right, let's share screen. I had something else shared up. I didn't think about this. Okay, here we go. Sharing screen. Looking at Adam versus Saints Joe in the fantasy football championship. Saints Joe is a one thirty six to one thirty one favorite. Favored by fifty four percent. Here's the quick lineup. Adam has the connection of Dak Prescott to Ceedee Lamb, Chris Godwin, Alvin Kamara, Brees Hall, Jake Ferguson. Ferguson, uh, Derek Henry, Zeke Elliott, and St. Joe is rocking with, hey there, little fella. Hey there, little fella. Amon Ross St. Brown, Chris Olave, Rashad White, who's just on fire, James Conner, Travis Kelsey, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams. Uh, he only has two saint- saints in his lineup, so uh, what are you guys thinking since Adam's not here to defend himself about this? Jay, go ahead. Uh, I think it's it's going to be, I think it's going to be close either way. Um, the, uh, negatives I feel like for Adam is like Hall's got a tough matchup against Cleveland, but, uh, with Dak and CD going against Detroit, I feel like they can put up some numbers. So I think it's going to be pretty close. And then, you know, St. Show's got some weak points with Devonte Adams kind of been crappy for most of the season. So, and he's got some questionable players. So we'll see. What about you, Dave? Uh, I, I hate to do it and I'm kind of glad that, um, Adam isn't here for this, but I'm going to, I'm going to go with St. Joe on this one. Cause I just, I just feel like having that plethora of wide receivers specifically in this league is going to be just a little bit of an edge. Um, yeah. if you, if you look at, uh, Adam's lineup, we're, we're rocking a lot of running backs here. This is basically a running back versus wide receiver matchup. And I'm going to give the slight edge to the, uh, to the wide receivers here. But I will say, uh, this is going to, I think this is going to come down to, uh, which, which version of these players show up, right? Cause I, Adam's got a lot of players on his team where if they show up, they show up, but if they don't show up, they don't show up. So, right. Um, for instance, I mean, for instance, when Adam was on his bye for the week, Brees Hall had two point nine points, and the following week he had forty four. Exactly, There's a, we got we got a lot of boomer bust uh, on Adam's lineup here. So, you just called Adam a boomer. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I told you, I'm glad he's not here. I'm glad he's not here, but I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a lot of boomer bust, but I, I do think if Adam's team shows out. Um, this could get ugly real quick, but if they don't, it's going to get ugly the other way. Well, I tell you, it looks close, but I am going to put my money on Adam in this strictly because Adam and I share a lot of the same people and I'm in a championship, so I need a lot of his players to do good. So I'm not going to root against him when I need Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, Brees Hall to do good in my league. So Adam, I'm hoping for big 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 points from all those guys for you so uh that is our fantasy football preview and um so and also we should be so we should be rooting for adam right because that would mean two years in a row two hosts have won the league that means we know what we're talking about yeah. i mean go adam yeah i'm, I'm rooting for adam but you asked yeah. me my opinion and my opinion is a little bit different but i will say uh let's just get a quick round of applause for the fantasy football bros podcast for having a championship that does not include christian mccaffrey in it right that's true there we but go you know, there we go you know you said that what you were giving us but remember dave your opinion really doesn't matter <laughs> it, it does uh, not. No, I finish. I don't know where I finished in the fantasy football bros league, uh, but it's not. It's not good. <laughs> good, old, good old throwback to uh, who was that? Jim Ursay. Yep. The opinion really doesn't matter. So um, I got some things in victory laps and dunks and all that stuff. So Adam's going to join us hopefully at some point and uh, he'll jump in here. But I don't want to sit around and wait for him. So let's move on to our Jay Pickett victory lap or dunk. Dunk. Instead of slam, Xavier goes down the middle. Slam, dunk. Get dunked on, bro. That was hot. That came in hot. That did come in hot, yeah. All right, what do you got, Jay? Um, mine's like a twofer. Uh, first, it's it's me because I couldn't beat Saint Stro, <laughs> um, which wasn't really surprising. He handled uh, it to, you, to be fair. Um, uh, and the second is just fantasy in general. Um, I'm over fantasy at this point in the in the in the year. Uh, I'm over the injuries. Players getting hurt mid game for me like every fucking week, and all the injuries and that. So I'm just kind of 
I'm over it. I'm ready for well, it to be over. Well, you had a comeback. You had a comeback player of the year bid, and you, you're not in any championships, but you are playing for some money, right? Yeah. So that, that's a good feeling, right? That's a good place to be to get something. Right? I mean, that's sort of. Good. I mean, I did start both leagues at number one spot and then fell and then came back and both to be in the playoffs, but I didn't make it as far as I would have liked. But sometimes when you just you're, when you're just... battling like seven plus injuries and then like some of your replacements get hurt mid game, it's pretty tough. Yeah, yeah. It's very true. Well, that's fine. Uh, my my get dunked on is a specific person. And Uh-oh. this person single handedly, single handedly helped me lose my fantasy uh, league to um, my family league with my, to my niece. First of all, niece, grown ass woman, no sympathy. Okay, she's she's what twenty seven, grown ass woman. So there's no like no little kid playing here. So this 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 bitch, I'll just come out and say it. She she's coming in with Tyreek Hill carrying her team, right? And I'm like, oh, he's injured. I'm fine. Oh, she lost Justin Herbert. Great. I'm just going to smooth sail right by her in the family league. Oh, my God. She's starting crap-ass Derek Carr. And then Thursday night, Derek Carr has 28 points. I'm like, great. Great start. I'm already in, in the weeds here. And uh, she's so I'm like, all right, we're going to battle. We're going to battle. So it comes down to it. She won. She meet, beat me by five points. Now, I'm going to dunk on myself real quick because remember my start of the week, guys, was uh, – was, um, Bumbles was David Montgomery. I took him out of my flex because after Derek Carr's big game, I needed a lot of points. So I took Bumbles out and put in Devin A. Chan. And um, Bumbles had 10 more points than Devin A. Chan. And I lost by five points. So that's a dunk on me. But no, the real dunk is on me again, kind of. But um, Cameron fucking Dicker, that son of a fucking bitch, piece of shit kicker. <laughs> Got her 21 points on Saturday. A kicker got her 21 points. It was legitimately her second highest scoring player. Met more than James Cook, more than Tyreek Hill. She fucking got 21 points from Tyreek or from Cameron Dicker. And she beat me by five points. And here, here's the caveat about that, too. Her kicker all season was Tyler Bass. She dropped him and picked up Cameron Dicker in the uh, the Bills uh, the Bills uh, bye week, and I picked up Tyler Bass the following week, and she didn't, and she forgot. So had I not picked up Tyler Bass, she would have picked up Tyler Bass and only got five points, not twenty one from Cameron Dicker, and she beat me. So she deserves congratulations. That was my team that had fucking Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. I thought I was going to just conquer the world. Lost Joe Burrow. Had better play from Jordan Love, and that's fine. But so that is my dunk on <laughs> for uh, in my niece. Didn't but her, really, uh, Dicker. Didn't her uh, defense kind of beat the shit out of you too? The defense wasn't that bad. I don't remember what it was off the top of my head, but it was certainly fucking Cameron, uh, fucking Dicker, the kicker. Me and Jay were watching that game, and I'm just like, look over. I'm like, motherfucker's got 14 points. Or seven, 20. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the Bills, uh, Ben, but don't break defense. Fucking against me. Fucking assholes. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> That's my fucking dunk. Dave, what are you getting dunked on? What are you dunking on? It's all right, buddy. It's all right. It's going to be okay. All right. First things first. Uh, because Adam isn't here and I have this tasty beverage that I've been trying to find a way to open without making too much noise, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and open it and, and, and a little shout out honor to Adam. So there's a little, ah, yeah, now it feels what are you right. Drinking? What do you got there, my friend? We got a little voltage, a little Mountain Dew voltage. Was that the I'm blue? Su- yeah, it's the blue raspberry because I'm super healthy. But okay. Anyway, my dunk of the week, and I am uh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get ready for some backlash here because I do technically kind of fall into this category, so I'm kind of dunking on myself. But I am going to dunk on um, fantasy football commissioners that have ridiculous, ridiculous rules with their fucking waiver wire, uh, like a ridiculously low amount of moves available for you the entire season, and owner and fantasy football commissioners that completely shut off the waiver wire during the playoffs. In two leagues, I lost this week in the playoffs. And in one league, I lost because Josh Jacobs was in my starting lineup, and I had to start him because there is only 15 moves available in this league for the entire season, and I used all of them. Uh, and it was, a flex, it was a flex position between 
uh, Keenan Allen, um, Josh Jacobs, or Austin Eckler. Now, the whole week, we were thinking that Josh Jacobs was probably going to play. Well, at least I yep. was, right? And Same. Eckler and Austin Eckler going up against the Bills had an early game. So I be- I benched Eckler and put him Jacobs because it's a better matchup for me. We all know how I feel about Austin Eckler. Well, Josh Jacobs doesn't play. And, of course, because I am at the move limit, uh, once I find out that Josh Jacobs is out, I cannot make a move to put anybody into that spot um, because I'm just I'm totally locked out of the waiver wire, and I end up losing that matchup by four fucking points with Josh Jacobs on my starting roster with a big fucking goose egg. And... Um, you know, I'm I'm obviously very very upset about it. So yeah, I I'm dunking on fantasy commissioners with ridiculous fucking rules. Uh, Fifteen moves is not enough. No. It's absolutely ridiculous, and I don't want to be a part of your league anymore. And you shouldn't be because even in the <laughs> league that you run, you and your brother run, you guys have a limit at thirty five. And at first, I'm like thirty five. Oh my god, that's good. <laughs> So I couldn't imagine 15. Oh my God. Yeah. 15 is absolutely crazy. So yeah, yeah. I, I do, I do fall into this category of fantasy hey, commissioners. Hey. So, hey. I do fall into this category of fantasy commissioners that sets a, a move limit, but I feel like 35 is, is that's, uh, that's okay. I mean, we don't we don't have anybody that really runs into like, yo, we're I'm running out of moves. I don't think we've ever buddy we've ever had anybody hit the limit. It's basically just so people don't add drop the last week and like screw with the right. waiver wear. But um, yeah, 15, 15 is crazy, um, dude. I love you. If you're watching this, I don't want to be a part of your league next year <laughs> if you don't fix that. So, <laughs> uh, Dave, I feel your pain I, about the Josh Jacobs. So. Yeah, fuck Josh. Dude, Dude, I Josh have... Jacobs is also my dunk too. Fuck you. You're like I don't know how far <laughs> I can go on this, but yeah, you are an absolute disgrace. I I knew in the beginning of the season. I don't care last year that you were RB one. I knew that you're fucking garbage, and I don't know why I fucking drafted you anyway because I've never believed in you. Um, but I did. I drafted you because I'm an idiot. Um, and fuck Josh Jacobs. Fuck that dude. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Welcome in, yeah. Adam. We've hey got guys. the nickname Sorry, No guys. Nonsense. It doesn't yes. matter I'm what you I name. made it. Sorry for being late. So we went over your matchup at the beginning, but we're not going to say what we said because you're going to have to go back and uh, listen to us. All right, I'll listen we to get, I gave, gave you a glowing <laughs> review. <laughs> hey, we gave predictions. It, it, was, it was a good match, that's for sure. No, we, got, we went over your future matchup here against oh, St. My future matchup. But we are in the middle, Adam. Actually, it's coming right up to you if you're ready for the get dunked on. You got something? Um, yeah, I do, actually. What do you got? It's you your know, turn. Your I, I have to dunk. I have to dunk on the Denver Broncos. Did anybody do that yet? Ooh, no, it's all yours. No. <laughs> oh, I have to dunk on the Denver Broncos. And then benching Russell Wilson. Um, he hasn't been great this season. I get it. But there's something going on there, and, and Sean Payton just doesn't like the guy. And and them getting into to spats on the oh, sideline oh, and him oh. screaming at him. And and I know it's a money thing, and I know if he doesn't play that they're going to save a little bit of money for him not playing and like all his incentives and all that shit. But no, what it is. Because what it just, is, actually. They're still in the hunt. Like They can still make the playoffs, and they're just like, nah, we don't want to. Well, let me let me clarify. What it is is it's opposite of what you think. It's uh, this is what happened with Derek Carr last year. Um, if he is unable to pass a physical in March, he gets an extra thirty nine million dollars if he's unable to pass a physical. So yeah, so he won't get hurt. So if they keep him, if they keep him uh, safe and being able. To pass a physical, then they could try to rework his contract or trade him or whatever. But if he's injured into the off season, they owe him nearly like forty million dollars. Well, I, so I just it. saw a re- I just saw a report that says they're going to cut him in March. Yeah, right. yeah. So there might be so, something, but what? A, what? So a I don't know what's going on there, but like, I don't know, man. Like playoffs are pretty important to NFL teams, and and for you to just kind of give up like like that the way that they are, and like. Sure, whatever's going on, fine, but I don't know. Well, I, Denver I think Broncos, this is like, basically y- just your mind. Go ahead, Jay. I think it's basically just them 
hedging for that they're going to cut him and they can't afford to get him hurt because then if he gets yeah, hurt, they have to pay him regardless if they cut him probably. So it's probably just like, they're sure. like, oh, fuck it. We'll, won't play him. We'll save 40 million and we'll cut ties with. Uh, awful. Is that yeah, one of the worst of all time? It, it might be. Like, he's an absolute because that, they paid him a stupid amount of money just because, and like they gave know. up so it's much just, to get him too. Yeah, and it just my, it's mind blowing because they are close to the playoffs. Like that division is in shambles right his, now. Honestly, and, too. Like I don't know I don't if you know. guys seen it, but someone posted like his stats, and like his stats are like very similar to Mahomes this season. Yeah, I think he's got like less interceptions than Mahomes. So I mean, like. I mean, he's not playing yeah. good by any means, no. and he's definitely not, not worth the money. But all. like in the in no, the scheme of things, like he's actually not bad not stat bad. wise. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. he's just he's not uh, he's not Sean Payton's kind of guy. Sean Payton's no, a pocket passer. You know, Sean Payton's a pocket passer guy. So true. Hey, I mean, that's what it is. So, all right. Well, that's right. a fair dunk. Let's uh, let's throw it out there real quick that the uh, the worst tra- the worst trade of all time, of course, is the Chargers trading Drew Brees uh, to the Saints. But I, I I do think Russell Wilson is a close second. Um, I'm not I've never been a fan yeah. of Russell Wilson. I I don't know. No, I don't no, understand I why they paid him. Same. No, uh, my to trade Drew Locke and a and no offense to the Seahawks just to get Russell Wilson and, and, then and two first round picks. A, yeah. And two first round picks. Yeah. But to, to pay him that kind of money. And then they're just like, eh, we don't want to make the playoffs this year. We're just going to cut Russell in, in March and move on. Well, you're right. They traded drew lock. No, offense. two first round picks, which happened to be sh- very high because your team sucked. Yeah. Didn't they <laughs> trade second rounders too, or something too? Didn't yeah. They get- yeah, yeah. yeah. Which there, was tra- there was a lot of there was a lot of draft picks in there. Yeah, and there then they gave picks. him that enormous just, contract. Yeah, and then they yeah exactly yeah. that's what I mean. And they're like, oh yeah, we'll just pay you all this money. You're gonna be our guy. And the beginning of the season didn't go so well. And the middle of the season they started to kind of ramp up a little bit, win some easy games. And then now the end of the season here they're like, yeah, we'll just yeah, run. yeah. <laughs> We're pretty sure at the, at the one of our first episodes, me and Jay discussed that trade last year, and we were against it then, saying it was a horrible move. So yeah, I mean, it's a wild move. They they willingly traded all that, willingly gave him all that money, and we all knew he kind of had fallen off already. And they were still like, "Yeah, let's fuck it, let's do this." And now they're like, "Oh fuck!" Yeah, he wasn't good in Seattle anymore. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and that's what it is. Wouldn't it be uh, wouldn't it wouldn't it be a little funny though if uh, Russ kind of maybe leaves practice week seventeen with like a lower back strain or like some type of <laughs> neck sting or some undiagnosable injury that's just could be very lingering? You know, I, yeah, I, don't know. I just think I think it'd be kind of funny. Yeah. Russ, lingering if you see this, then... I, I don't, I don't, I don't like you, and I don't want you to get paid, but I don't like the Broncos <laughs> either. So I mean, maybe you just you know tweak your back a little bit in practice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. All right. Yeah, all right. Well, Thunder let's Broncos move on. get dunked on. Let's move on to something a little more positive. Time for victory lap. Well, Adam, are you taking the big victory lap right now? That I think you know, I am. Let's you go. Know go for it. Go for it. Does I have made the championship in the fantasy football bros podcast league? Uh, I am against Saints Joe. And I have I, I plan on beating him again, like I did earlier. And uh, I will be your new champion come next week. But That's- that is my victory lap. I have made the, and I also made the championship in, in one of my other leagues. So two out of five leagues, uh, I'm in the championship. One league, I'm playing for third place. And uh, yeah, it's been a good good year for fantasy football for me. And and two championships out of five leagues, I'll take it. And both, many, both of my higher uh, buy-in leagues, so that's always a plus. Well, just you know, you, you got to go back. And we'll get, yeah, we'll give you it. We'll give you it. Thank you. Well Thank done. You. Well Thank done. You. Well done, sir. Appreciate if, it. If we can't, if we can't do it, at least bring the championship home for the podcast. You get with the yes. host. Maybe. It needs it needs to happen. <laughs> at at least fifty percent of this uh, podcast uh, right. hosting is uh, also playing for at least a title in third place. There you so go. 50 percent is pretty good for top three finishers. 
Oh yeah, for the for the league, you're right. You you're, Jay's playing for third. Uh, yes, sometimes sometimes co-host Fireman John is also playing for third. So we'll see yeah. which one of those two can bring it home, bring home the bronze, and that's cool. That's yeah. like the scariest matchup is third place because you either win money or nothing. Yep. Yeah. It's just you know yeah, at least at least you know first and second you're you're guaranteed to 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 cash out right more money than you put into the league and and. But for third place, it is. It gets nerve wracking because you're like, now it's like, I either need to win or I don't have anything. But yeah. I don't have to worry about that in the fantasy football bros league. So, and I think your boy right here is sitting in like tenth place. So if I'm not invited <laughs> back next season as a, as a as a guest on the fantasy football bros podcast, I love y'all very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got you'll be. I mean, for the off season, we need content so you can be around yeah. there. We, okay. We're gonna have, uh, yeah, no, I, we're I gonna have a segment. Absolutely. We're gonna have a segment. Dave plays a song on the ocarina every uh, every week. There you go. I Plus, love that. Uh, boys, boys, I got a I got a job for a few more months. I'm gonna, I, I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of you, Dave, you got to have some kind of victory lap, right? Aren't you in a championship too? But I am in a championship matchup, and I got to throw I got to throw a victory lap out to my boy. Uh, and I, th- I think you knew this one was coming, Mr. Puka, Mr. Puka Nakua, uh, dude. I dropped you in as my flex this week, and uh, boy, did you deliver! Nine catches, one 164 yards, got a tutty, uh, dropped a 30 burger on baby bro on Thursday night, which just deflated him for the whole rest. Like a, a 30 burger on Thursday night is really like so much more influential because your opponent just looks at that and is like, "Damn it!" Like you, you just like they just feel like they're out of it, and I know it's it so much this more week. satisfying on a Thursday. Yeah, dropping that thirty burger on a Thursday night. Um, yeah, so I mean, honestly, dude, I think like I think Puka has been. You could you could argue that Puka and Kyron have probably been like the two big waiver wire acu- acquisitions for the season. I don't, there's, I don't think there's argument at all. Yeah, I mean, you oh, could. I don't you argue. Could, yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, you could, argue, you you could argue either position. one. Yeah, you, you could yeah. argue either one, but based on what you need. But um, but yeah, I yeah. grabbed him week one and just been riding with him the whole season. And yeah, yeah, I grabbed, cool. I grabbed Kyron in one of my leagues pretty early. Um, think, did I have an injury? I don't know if I even had an injury, but I, in my in my other championship league, I I, uh, I had a pretty high waiver because I was a the top of the league right so it goes from bottom to top right and then it resets after everybody uses their waivers and all that fun stuff but uh i ended up i ended up trying for there was a couple other running backs too after chubb got hurt uh it was ford um it was i think it was all the same week but i ended up with kyron williams and haven't looked back i haven't been, been in first place for most of the league and kyron's hey, been huge thing. You're right. You, you know, we all thought it was going Ford was going to be the uh, the league winner, and it turned out to be Kyrie and Puka. So you never know. Yeah. You have to make those moves. You're not going to get that guy unless you take a chance on that guy. Or, or you could and just draft I, uh, Kyron like I did and and yeah, everyone yeah, to yeah, it. True. Yeah, that's wild. That that's crazy that you did that, um, dude. I, I drafted him in for both Kyron leagues. And, so the in in this league I have Kyron and I, it's a keeper league so I'll be able to keep him for a 10th round pick next year. So I I already have Kyron Williams in the 10th round for for next year. And uh yeah, like I put in probably four claims that that all got somebody picked them up before me because I was so high on the waiver list and ended up with Kyron so I'm super happy with that. And I traded for him in in a couple other leagues and yeah, yeah, he's the he's the one league I drafted ever, him in like the 16th round or something. It was this yeah. league, I think it was. The was it? Was it this league? I can't remember and, if it was and, this or the other one. And not to take away from from Dave's uh, victory lap on Puka because Puka has just been an absolute animal for yeah. that offense, and like in the absence of Cooper Cup for the first couple games, and and even with with Cup back in the lineup, he's been a very reliable receiver. He's been on the field. And just he catches everything, and he makes some insane catches, and just yeah, his his fantasy value is unreal. Absolutely, and I know you two uh, guys are 
making those guys your keepers for uh, for next year, I'm sure. So, and that, and oh, more power to you. Um, <laughs> why I have to decide between all the garbage on my roster? All right, uh, Jay. So, <laughs> what do you have as your uh, as your victory lap? Uh, I've I've gone to this guy before, but I'm going back to him. He's probably one of the least talked about tight ends so far this year because everyone's talking about Laporta and McBride and Kelsey, but it's it's Evan Ingram. He's going to finish in the top five at least probably, and he's like 12 points out of finishing in the top three. So, I mean, he could potentially get up into uh, into the top three, maybe even top two. I'm not sure how far away he is from Kelsey, but... I mean, he put up a monster game again last week, so that's my victory lap. Not a bad one to have. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, Kelsey. Kelsey's just disappointment. I saw a great tweet that um, uh, Taylor Swift is a well-known Philadelphia Eagles fan, so she's doing this to destroy them from the inside. And I thought, eh, maybe. <laughs> maybe so. Maybe so. All right, my victory lap. You boys ready? Let's do it. You ready for this? All right, let me let me get a little screen share going on because I am in the championship in uh, my big money league, and reasons being is for so many people. But last year in the championship, I played Chad, who was on the podcast before, and I played him this week, this year, and I beat him, this motherfucker by one hundred and six points. You guys can see it right here on the screen. One ninety three. To 87. This is a PPR league, folks. This is a one flex league. Our fantasy football bros league is a two flex league, and you score 140. <laughs> I scored 193. So let's look at this this domination I gave him. Uh, 20 points from Dak Prescott. I'll take it. 27 points from CD Lamb. 53 points from Amari Cooper, 15 from DeAndre Swift, 19 from Saquon Barkley, Sam Laporta checking in with four, 43 (laughs) points from Brees Hall, and then kicker and defense, five points each. This is a straight shellacking. He comes in with Lamar Jackson, uh, MVP favorite, Tyreek Hill, MVP favorite, Raheem Mostert, you know, doing the best year of his career and all these guys under delivered for him. I mean, Lamar Jackson did good, but everybody else under delivered for him. And Jesus, Jesus, 53 points for between, between Amari Cooper and Brees Hall. I had 96 points. Those two players would have beat Chad this week with 87 points. I, I mean, those are outrageous numbers anyway. I mean, 265 yeah, re- uh, receiving yards for Amari Cooper. Fucking crazy. I mean, and, and as much as I've been shitting on Bruce, Brees Hall, we talked about this before Adam got here. The week before, Brees Hall had 2.8 points and comes back and scores 43 points. Absolutely. Yeah, I, gotta love that. I mean, he did play Washington, though. So, I mean, I don't care. I'll take it. I don't care. I'll take it all day long. And, and, and I, had, uh, just, I had Brees Hall in the Fantasy Football Bros League against Fireman John last week. And, and he called it, too. He wasn't very happy that I had Hall against Washington last week. So, yep. And, like and look. And, and just to, to clear things up in this uh, in this main league here, I w- finished fourth. Chad finished first. Chad was first in the 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 thing the whole season, even though I had nearly two hundred more points than him. He just gets gets lucky sometimes. You you just win the games that are in front of you, right? And that's what you have to do. And he did. And boy, did I give it to him. So I'm sorry I had to take all my aggression out on you and Chad two years in a row, <laughs> but it happens. And uh, just a quick look see of the championship game. I am the 58% favorite. He's fielding a team of Justin Fields, Amon Ross St. Brown, Garrett Wilson, uh, Christian McCaffrey, Ford, uh, Kraft, Kraft. That's his uh, weak spot. But Mike Evans who's on fire. So, And he picked up Baltimore's defense, who I dropped by the did, way. So did you guys I dro- see the stat about McCaffrey? No, what's like that? 58 58- Point something percent of teams in in the fantasy championship have McCaffrey. Jeez. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's wild. I, I couldn't believe that stat. That's why. That's it's why wild. I gave a round. Of, that's why I gave a round of applause because the fantasy football bros league is one of the only leagues that we don't have Christian no, McCaffrey in the yes, championship. There is no CMC yeah. in the championship. But Kamara <laughs> is my savior, and and it proved it to be correct. 
Christian uh, Rose, sorry, you, Dave. You, you, you better <laughs> hope he uh, he he uh, delivers on his promises a lot better this week. Yeah, he better. Well, those are our victory laps. So uh, let's move on to um, Jay's segment of uh, fuck that guy. So Jay, I'm sure you're fired up about somebody or something. So what are you fired up about? Uh, this week's fuck that guy is. Uh, I thought you'd be better this year, but uh, he has been a letdown, and it's Devonte Adams. Mm. He's going to finish not even in the top ten for receivers. Um, and he's, he's like 17th right now, I think. So not, not great for a, a, a guy that's, you know, people think is going to be like top 10 every year. Right. And going into the situ- situation, uh, with, uh, you know, the new quarterback, everyone was like, well, he had Derek Carr and he was great. So he's just going to be fine no matter what. And, uh, nah, nah, bruh. He was not fine. Nah, nah bruh. Nah. So totally get it. Totally understand it and get it. So, uh. That's a good one. What do you think about that, Adam? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's crazy to think that Devontae Adams went from from being drafted so highly and, and up at the top of the league to, to not even cracking the top ten. Like, it, I mean, it's, it's wild. I, I, the, the QB carousel that they've had in, in Vegas has not helped the situation. And, and he's, I mean, he's, he's one of those that could, in the beginning of the season, I know against the Bills, he had, like, 30 points I think he had a pretty big big game like week two or three and then just been very mediocre and then maybe another big game in there and just Devontae Adams that's a good one I like that yeah yeah, you can definitely fuck that guy he sucks this year and it's sad because he's so good yeah Uh, but I mean maybe maybe Rodgers was the reason why he was so good but I don't know (laughs) he had a good year last year with Carr you can't say that yeah, he did have a good year last year with Carr, so you're you're right about that. But um, yeah, he is not um, he is not QB proof, <laughs> as we like to say on the podcast. He is one of those guys that he needs a decent quarterback to throw to him, and and yeah, Aiden O'Connell is has been okay, but not great. Uh, and we all know Jimmy Garoppolo is you know Jimmy Garoppolo, so he's not great. But yeah. Very, very well, very well. Uh, damn, sure did you? you uh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys see the stat that Aiden O'Connell didn't throw a pass after this after the first quarter? Yeah, and, no. didn't he only against, throw like against, six yeah. anyway? Like he he he, he, he started he, hot, and then he went like zero and seven or something, right? Yeah, and then they just ran the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> they he, ran the, last, the entire his, second half. His last, yeah, his last completed pass in the Chiefs game, I think, was in the first quarter. And the, and then no, nothing afterwards. It's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, wow. yeah. I mean, he only had sixty-two pass yards. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's hard to fault Devontae Adams, right? Because we all know the talent there. Yeah, and we we yeah, 100%. We, we we yeah, we all know the talent there, and it's like, I think just the the QB situation really didn't didn't obviously didn't help him at all. And I think if you had a part of Devontae Adams this year, you're you're pretty upset so yeah. I, like i understand i understand jay's you know fuck that guy um i think i don't even think jay wise, had him though i don't even think jay had him no i i didn't yeah so i think value wise though if if the if the raiders get any type of like reliable quarterback at all next year just due to like the stats uh, Devonte adams is going to drop in the draft so i mean Ne- like due to this performance next year could be a great year to grab Devonte adams with a with some value yeah for sure i agree with that yep yeah, so that that works um all right well we'll move on to my start of the week and uh adam is going to enjoy this uh one because my start of the week a because i need it and B, because he's probably due, and C, because the matchup is just ripe, and I am going with Dak Prescott. Guy's been great all year. He's been really good all year, and, you know, against the Bills, he, he had a down week. This that's past low. week was was uh, this past week was whatever. He was fine. I mean, 20 points, that's, that's fine. But going into a matchup against Detroit, with uh, San Francisco and Brock Purdy just shitting all over themselves, that this game could be 
position to take over the first in the NFC and have the first round by. Because um, depending on, of course, what uh, San Francisco does as well, but they might have not thought they had a chance. Now, this goes for D- Dallas and Detroit. This could be for first place. This could be a major draw for first place. So I think this game in general is going to be a shootout. And I really think that Dak Prescott's going to have one of his big games. Uh, maybe not his five touchdown game, but he's going to get CeeDee Lamb involved. He's going to get Brandon Cooks involved, you know, and he's going to have one of his big games. Might even have a rushing touchdown. So I would not be surprised to see Dak. I wouldn't be surprised to see Dak in the 30s in this yeah, game because I, love, you know, I would love it. Quarterback's been kind of quiet lately, and uh, it's time for a big performance. And um, yeah. let's see what Dak can do against Detroit's defense, which has been attacked all year. And you can put up numbers against, and I think it's just going to be a shootout. Dak versus Jared Goff and 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 Amon Ra against uh, against Ceedee Lamb. Like it's going to be it's going to be a fun matchup to watch. It's the game of the week, I believe. It's even oh, more okay. to me. This is more of a game. People are going to say that Baltimore and Miami is the game of the week. I don't think so. I think Baltimore is going to destroy Miami, and I think this Dallas versus Detroit is the game of the week to watch. I couldn't agree more. Not only because I have Dak and I have CD, but it's it's true. He had a you know, I mean, he had a decent game last week, but it wasn't you know stellar. Um, still put up twenty points, um, but yeah, I think he could be into the thirties this week. And and you know, as as much as everybody wants to praise Detroit, it's still Detroit. Um, they're still playing for something. Dallas is still playing for something, especially with the win from Philly. Um, and of course, Dallas lost to Miami last week, and and that was just that hurts their standings for the division. So they definitely have something to play for, and I think you're right. I think it's going to be a shootout. I like it. Hell yeah! Well, yeah. So there it is, the start of the week. So unless you guys got anything else to say, Dave, you can take on your Stone Cold Lock of the Week. <sighs> All right, boys. So. First things first, let's address the elephant in the room. I let you accountability. I uh, I let you down last week, and I am I am sorry. And I think I figured out the problem. Uh, and the problem is is that I am picking. <laughs> <laughs> the sorry. problem is is that I am picking one game, and I'm I'm sitting here thinking, well, enough of that wussy shit. We're not going to pick one game because I don't know if you can see the shirt. But your boy is the parlay king. So this yes. week, I this week we're gonna get back on track, and I'm gonna give you a four team parlay lock of the four. week. Jesus. Oh, Dude, let's we're going, go. We're going, we're going four. Well, I gotta, teams I gotta write I'm, it down so I can so I can ride with you. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make this quick, and we can dis- we can discuss it after. Uh, so we're going to go with the Seahawks at home, minus 3-5 against the Steelers. We're going to go with the Rams, minus 5 at the Giants. We're going to go with the Bucks, minus 2.5 at home versus the Saints. And the Packers, plus 1.5 at Minnesota. Uh, it's going to give you a plus uh, 12.66, which a $25 bet is going to win you at 341.55. And I have already placed my bet. We're riding. We're riding, baby. Let's go. Jesus. Let's go. Seattle plus five and a half. Is that what you said? Or minus five and a half? We got, we got Seattle minus three and a half. Rams minus, minus five, and a half. five and a half. Yeah. Uh, Bucks That's minus two and a half. And the Packers plus one and a half. Jesus. Let's get it. I'm riding. We have a, we have a live look into what's happening in Jay's head during all that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> all I gotta say, boys, is place down your twenty five bucks. Let's all, all win. All I gotta 50. say about it is that I, I agree with Dave. Yeah, we agree. Yeah, with I Dave. totally you. agree. With you. I love the pick. Pu- it's it's the, great. The pu- I love the Bucks the, pick for sure. The Parlay King I'm, can't pick one game. That's where we're run. That's yeah. where we're running into that's, problems, that's boys. It, I'm man. picking four. I like it. I'm picking four. I but like to be this. to be fair though, to get this right, folks, he has to get all four right. He can't be like, "Well, I was seventy five percent." It counts. Nope. Nope. That's not how nope. parlays work at home, guys. N- nope. You oh, need yeah. all four. Oh, and he's, I, he's I already, prepared for. He's prepared for it for sure. Mm-hmm. I already placed it. I'm riding. I'm riding with you, boys. Anybody that's going with me, I already placed it. We're good to go. And I might I like do it too it. because I haven't played a good parlay in a while. I'm gonna ride it. But I'm gonna ride it. Is that on DraftKings? You get. Is that on FanDuel? Uh, I, I, 
Yeah, I do DraftKings, but I'm sure. DraftKings? I, I, okay. uh, yeah, I'm sure it's the same line on FanDuel. We got any qualms sure. on the lines, though? Anything we're not, anything where you, you guys sitting kind of, no. eh? You want to buy uh, it no, so fast? Not- one at a time, real quick. What's the first one? So we got Seahawks at home, minus three and a half against the Steelers. Perfect. Uh, I Seahawks love that line. I hate, I hate Mason Rudolph. I think he's trapped. I mean, that would scare me a little bit because the Steelers have been playing with fire, but it's not a bad line because so has uh, so has so has the Seahawks. So yep. plus it being at yeah. home, yeah. I like it at Both home. Both teams fighting the for playoffs. So mm-hmm. yeah, they're fighting for playoff spots. I like it at I, I like Seattle at home. Steelers don't travel well. I know the defense is on fire, but they don't they don't travel well. Uh, we You're have the right. Rams that's, minus that's, five that's five true. against the Giants. Yeah, the Giants suck, but new quarterback, Tyrod, Tommy Cutlet's been benched, but, I mean, the Rams are actually playing the way Chaz, better than me. The Chaz curse lives on. It does live on. <laughs> he, he called but, uh, his Rams, guy. He, Chaz killed two Giants players this year because he had to be like, oh, these are my guys. <laughs> Tom, Tommy Cutlets and Saquon. Bro, Saquon I can't believe they went. is in my lineup for my championship that I traded him from you, so thank you. Thank you. You're appreciate welcome. that. Although I still probably would have rather had uh, Michael Pittman. Jr. Well, I mean, so. he was murdered, so it didn't really help me any. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. What, what was the second so line or the next line, Dave? Uh, so the third, we got the Bucks minus two five at home against the Saints. That the only thing that scares me about that is it's going to be a tough divisional ma- division matchup. That might be the scary yeah. one. I think that's why okay, the yeah. line is so low. But again, yeah. they got they got home. They need the game. I I just the, I believe the I believe show. the Bucks are going to win that. Yeah, they're going to win that by at least a field goal. I believe in that. And, and, and here's the thing, though: any time anybody ever in life has depended on Baker Mayfield, what happens? I don't right. know, man. This year feels different. He, he does. A good right. offense. He's got great receivers. He's got a good running back. He's I, Baker's I'm, uh, right now, man. I'm not believing in Baker Mayfield to cover this line as much as I'm just believing in Mike Evans to make him look better than he is and Rashad White to just keep keep the tear going. He's do- I'm, I'm They're okay both playing great, those guys. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I am okay and, with it. And what was and the then, last one? Last but not least, we got the Packers plus one and a half at Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, at Packers min- at Minnesota, eh? At Minnesota, eh? And I'd, at I'd, Minnesota, I'd eh? On the, I know they're on the road, and honestly, I would take this game money line. But I mean, you, if you're getting the point and a half, you might as well just take it. But I just the the Vikings are struggle. They're they're struggling for quarterback. I mean, they're playing for nothing. It's like I don't know. I I don't really understand the line to be honest. I feel like I feel like Packers should not be dogs in that game. Packers are hot right now too. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Very good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't hate it either. I'm gonna ride with you. I'm gonna put that part of in. Uh, let's go. Let's go, boys. Twenty five bucks down. Win three fifty. Let's all go out. Have a great New Year's. Well, well. That's before good. you get to your before you get to your daily, Adam, I actually want to throw in a uh, an honorary yeah. victory lap that I forgot to mention, um, and that is uh, I want to thank you to the highest regards, Jamar Chase, because I've rolled with you all year, and you've been. You've been fantastic or you've been decent. You've never been dog shit. You've been fantastic or decent. Never were dog shit. And you got hurt. And instead, and, and instead, Jamar Chase, instead of like toughing it out and getting out there and playing with Jake Brown, and you said, I'm going to take the week off, try to heal up. So me, reactionary, don't. I don't start Amari. I don't start um, Jamar Chase. I start Amari Cooper instead. So thank you very much, Jamar Chase, for sitting the week out and let and forcing me to start Amari Cooper. So and then it also in turn. It, and in turn, because I had to start him as my receiver one or two, um, it let my flex be open. And since I wasn't starting Jamar Chase, I started Brees Hall. So thank you very much for being hurt because my lineup, I still would have won. But my lineup would have looked a lot different because only one of those guys were going to be in my lineup and not you, both of them. So. Do you start Chase if he if he's not hurt? Yeah, were usually. You like not, were you ever not debating on sitting him? Well, because the way I the way I had a chase in both leagues that I drafted him is he ended up being my receiver two, and not because of his production as much as the other guy's production. Like he was right. my number two in this league because CD Lamb is the best receiver probably in fantasy football or close to it this year. And in the He's other league, I, in the other league where I had him, um, I also had Keenan Allen, who was probably the second or third best receiver. So. 
Yeah, Chase was always because I never looked at him from week five as my number one. So yeah, he would have been in there, and and Cooper or Brees Hall would have been in my flex. But because he was out, I got to start both of them. Yeah. So, but I'll tell you what: if if Jamar Chase plays this week, oh, I, get- I got a pickle on my hands. Um, I, if Jamar Chase plays this week, I might put him in my flex, but I won't have that opportunity because uh, Brees Hall, I believe, is playing tonight. My, actually, Mari Cooper and Brees Hall are playing each other tonight, Thursday night. So uh, they're probably going to be in the lineup, and Amari's going to be, or and uh, Jamar's going to be on the bench. So that was just a quick synopsis. I wanted to uh, see you a second, nice. by the way. Okay, behind Tyree. Who's first? Oh, Tyree. I forgot. About and, yeah, Tyree. You, you want to know what's crazy CD2. too is Keenan Allen, who was. Like probably in the top two earlier in the year, in he's missed two games so far, and he's still fifth. Okay, yeah. So oh, he's fifth now. Yeah, yeah. So like I said, like Ty- like Jamar Chase, like he was always a wide receiver two for me. So I didn't really hate him the whole year. You could do a lot worse as your right. was a wide receiver two than Jamar Chase. So all right, Adam, what is your sure. daily daily all right. uh, daily? guys? My daily bargain this week, and we're we'll talking about Devontae Adams. And him not performing this season with with two mediocre quarterbacks. But my daily bargain this week is Vegas receiver Trey Tucker. Trey Tucker? Yes, he's 5,200 on FanDuel. And he has, I believe, scored in like two straight games. Nobody knows who he is, but he (laughs) has constantly been putting up numbers. Um, They they use him out of the backfield on, on sweeps. Um yeah, put them in. 5200 It's pretty cheap. Wow. And uh, it's a yeah. very high-risk, high-reward type play. Um, but if you're struggling to, to get those those lineups filled, um, I have yeah, Trey Tucker against Indy. I think I think he's going to have a good game. Can we see Pickles right now, guys? Yes. No, when I'm, we can't when see, I'm tr- I can't see anything. When, I, when I'm trying to do a uh, podcast, this is... <laughs> your your beard just started growing over your eye, but I can't I can't see anything. <laughs> uh, for for those of you at home, she's literally like standing underneath my microphone, like, look at me, I am beautiful. And yes, you are. Um, yes, that's a that's, that's just a name I was not expecting. Holy shit, <laughs> that's what you need. I don't though. think a lot of people. I don't think a lot of people were, but those are the ones that are going to win you those daily lineups. Is the ones that you've never heard of. Some random guy puts him in his lineup, and then you're like, who the hell was that guy that that put up? You know. 15, 20 points. Uh, but Trey Tucker, he's, he's got touchdowns in the last few games. Here, I'll look it up right now. Hold on. Those are See the guys you need. I'm steps. always I'm always looking for the cheapest wide receiver you can find to fill fill that wide receiver three slot. Because you, yeah, just, you, pick, and you Hunter, pick your lineup Hunter, and you're left with nothing. And... Hunter Renfro hasn't done anything. No. And a lot of people were kind of disappointed in him. He's in the graveyard. still drafted him. Yeah, he's 100% in the think, graveyard. We didn't even think to put him and, in the uh, graveyard because nobody ever fucking started him or cared. <laughs> yeah. So, let's see. Trey Tucker. He has... <laughs> let's see. He had two touchdowns last week against the Chargers. Um, didn't do very well against Kansas City last week, but he's got Indy this week, and, and with Vegas just being so bad... Um, I think Trey Tucker is going to bounce back and have a pretty good week this week. So we'll see. That's what it is about. Uh, wow. How was it, Adam? We didn't talk to you. How was your Christmas and back in the B low? Uh, it was good, man. It was, it was, uh, it was tough to try and see everybody and fit a lot of things in, in the short amount of time that I've been here. Uh, but I worked most of the time literally from the kitchen table at, at my mother's place. So uh, it hasn't been too bad, but yeah, I mean, the weather's been great. Like it, it was, I, you know, I expected snow on the ground and there was a little bit when I got in on Tuesday last week. And, Certainly and, uh, not today. But it just, it just melted away and hasn't been back since and can't complain when it's, you know, 50 degrees on Christmas. For any of you that are not in the Buffalo area, which are obviously are some of you, uh, we live in the Buffalo area. So this time last year, if you listen back to our podcast, about. we were in a blizzard, folks. Blizzard. Yeah. Seven feet of snow. Um, DeMar Hamlin's died. More than uh, that. Just, yeah. just everything. Uh, everyone just missed Christmas because we were stuck in our houses uh, under seven yep. feet. Yes. Yep. Couldn't go visit our families. DeMar Hamlin dies yeah. a few days later. Uh, and this Christmas, um, 55 degrees. Not, not, even, not even an exaggeration. No. Nope. And sunny. Degrees. Yep. And sunny. And so. sunny. 
what a difference. Uh, maybe maybe yeah. the, uh, Mother Nature was like, well, y'all had a lot of snow last year, so we're going we're gonna to leave you alone a little bit. Let's Hopefully hope. she was that kind. So I the Chaz's it. Record Review is back, and I want to tell everyone at home, but I want to tell you guys too. So we reviewed this album this week, Stanley Clark School Days, and it is not a rock album. This is a jazz fusion, like jazz, um, you know, kind of funk and uh, rock, you know, rock-ish album. This album's great for everyone at home. Like I was surprised. You can check out Chaz's Rock Record, rock record Review to uh, get the whole review, but like just cool, easy. I don't want to say easy listening, but just like jams out on the. He's a bass player. He's a fan Fantastic bass player from 1976. It's got six songs. They're mostly all instrumentals. It's just really cool music to put on and listen to. It's a high recommend, folks. So I'm pretty sure you guys probably don't know who Stanley Clark is, right? No. No, but I'm going to be listening to it after this. Yeah, it's a really cool album. Uh, my my poll, and I want to tell you guys right now, uh, um, it's already out on the on the. Uh, at the end of the record review, I always pick a random album from my collection via an app. And this week's, this next week's one, and I want to invite any but any of you on, to, if you guys want to join me for it at some point. It is the Fantasy Football Bros uh, intro piece. I pulled Andrew WK's album. I get wet. Um, who I have on vinyl, and that's where the song Party Hard comes from. That's our intro. And if any of you nice. guys want to join me for it, 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 I love the album, spoiler alert. So if you guys aren't too familiar with it, you can either listen to it and prepare or just hear it live when I, when I, uh, when I do it and give me your instant reaction. So you guys are invited. So keep an eye out for that home, at home, folks. Chaz is Rock Record Review on YouTube. So shameless, shameless self-plug. Speaking of shameless self-plug, Dave, where you at? I think it just real quick. I think it would be really funny if you like used Andrew WK for the intro to this podcast, but you also just hated him. Like, wouldn't that be funny? Wouldn't that be funny if you're just like Andrew WK? Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! He's shit. You know, like uh, I think that would be great. That would be never. Awesome. I'm a big Andrew WK. Mark, I own every one of his vinyls, and he is so fun and just positive and like. And it's a perfect pick. I mean this this album this uh, review is going to come out around New Year's, just after New Year's. Like, what better way to spend New Year's than party hard, baby? It's oh, yeah. it's the anthem of the anthem of our childhood. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So we're speaking of same, yeah, shameless sure, self-promotion, right? Dave. Uh, thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Yeah, so if you guys are, are, are interested in some uh, nerdy content, I do a podcast with my good buddy Adam. Uh, Let's Talk Nerdy Podcast. We do week, uh, weekly episodes. We are on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that you get your podcasts. Um, if you want to jump over and check us out, uh, we are making the push for a pretty big a uh, milestone for us that we're kind of proud of and we would uh we would really appreciate the support so thanks now, man now appreciate just, that. Just, just for people at home uh what does the let's talk nerdy uh theme song sound like played on the ocarina just so hold on one second I've, just, been, I've been working on it this is the first note ready <laughs> spoiler alert it's the same note from the fantasy football bros podcast uh, so I expect you to learn some Andrew WK on that for the, uh, the next. It, it came with a songbook, bro. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna be the. I'm gonna be like top ten Ocarina players in the world. I promise you. Let's go. I bet you, I yeah, bet you there's a competition. I bet you you can find YouTube videos of like an Ocarina competition. Probably. Oh, I w- I wouldn't doubt oh, it. Yeah. There's probably some dude out there that has like the full get up and he can play it with his eyes closed, one handed, and yeah. I'm I mean, gonna it's, beat probably that guy. Not, it's probably not that different from a flute, but I wouldn't know. I'm not a flautist by any means, so I wouldn't be. That's the actual term, yes, band geek. Uh, uh, next record review. Be on the lookout, guys. I'm going to head over there. We're going to give Chaz the ocarina, and he is going to play along with every single song on the album, ocarina style. It's going to be sick. I know some of them on guitar already. I can, I can figure it out. Let's see. E drops down to B minor. Let's do this. Uh, I'll have like I'll have the the ocarina all mapped out for you uh, with 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 note and chord progression. <laughs> there we new, go. New, new music from me coming too soon, guys. You'll you'll all hear it soon. Nice. So all right, all right, Dave. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, pleasure as always. Thanks, brother. Happy New Year, my friend. Uh, Adam, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me again, and uh, look for me to be your new champion next week. Also, yeah, I heard that. that they do. They're doing a big New Year's throwdown in Nashville. So, boys, let's think about it. <laughs> they are. They are. They do it every year. It's the. Uh, it's like the biggest New Year's bash of all time. 
like got an entire nation. It's just, it's a bunch of country singers and they sing and we just get fucked up in the streets in Nashville. I'm I'm <laughs> it'll, be my first, it'll be my first it'll be my first one, so I'm excited to go see it. Seriously, honestly considering it because it's Sunday, Monday. Those are my days off. So I'm seriously, honestly considering maybe taking the drive down. And Jay, as always, thank you for joining yeah, us. Thank you. All of us are in the in line for some money. Jay's playing for some third. Me, the other three of us are in some championships and playing for some third. So good luck to everybody. Um, except I hope uh, we can all be champions, except for Jay. But I, I wish he was a champion too. I wish it was me versus Jay this week, but. Yeah, and in the other league, it could have been me versus Jay, too. Just cards didn't fall Jay. that way. would have made a more interesting yeah. show. Jay, you didn't get anything done this week. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right, guys. Thank you for joining us. Check all out the Nerdy Podcast. Check out Chaz's Rock Record Review. Until next week, yeah. we'll see you next time. Peace. See you, boys. Later, Later boys. guys. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.